Welcome back. March across the country is dominated by college basketball. Now, the Badger men are currently making their tournament run. Well, so we're recording this early, so I'm assuming that they won their first game and are playing, in fact, later today. Now, the Badger women are also in the NIT this year. But this weekend also marks the UW women's hockey team making their bid for a second consecutive national championship. Now, Madison itself is a little bit of a women's sports town. The city will add a professional women's soccer team and a Madison Mallards-esque softball team as well. Now, the market for women's sports can be hard to pin down. The men's basketball games will be carried over the airwaves, but you needed an ESPN Plus login to watch the hockey semifinals on Friday. Now, some local establishments are working to try and build a home for women's sports, including some here in the Midwest. Whiskey Girl Tavern on Chicago's north side builds itself as something for everyone, and the community there quickly showed an interest in seeing more women's sports at the bar. We spoke with one of the bar owners, Heather Roberts, about what that process was like. So what was the initial inspiration for the bar? So uh, we've been working, my wife Christina and I um, have the, the bar, and um, we've been working on this project for probably five or six years, um, just in terms of looking at different spaces, um, the plan was initially to buy an existing venue uh, and and kind of, you know, uh, keep it going and then make changes over time. Um, but the, the goal really, uh, my wife and I are both really into sports. We were both athletes growing up and um, we both lived in Chicago for a long time and loved going out and watching sports. Um, and we wanted a place that we would like to go to ourselves. And so that was really the motivation uh, was to create something that, you know, was just uh, the type of environment we would want to spend the afternoon watching sports and um, drinking nice cocktails and, and having food. And so that's what we've created. Yeah. So what kind of reception did you get from the community? Yeah, I mean, we we really had sports as one of our, our pillars. Um, I think the other was just kind of creating an environment that was um, our our motto is something for everyone, you know, and so we wanted a really comfortable environment where people, whether they liked sports or not, could come from the neighborhood and feel comfortable there. And then, you know, it was really about quality. You know, we wanted excellent drinks. Um, we, we sought out somebody to create a cocktail program for us. Um, we have a small food menu so that we can have really good quality food. Um, so, you know, it, it, the sports was one piece of it, but it was really about the overall environment and creating a space um, for the community where anyone could come in and enjoy a, a, an afternoon or evening there. So also, how did women's sports come into the picture? Is that something that fans noticed a need for? So it was actually the first kind of experience we had with the interest in women's sports was we had just opened and the Chicago Sky basketball team got into the playoffs. And um, we started showing those games and we even opened uh, on, we were normally closed on Tuesdays and the game was a Tuesday. So we opened specifically for that. And we only had, excuse me, the, um, the front part of the bar at that point. So 50 people um, and it was packed. I mean, and it was just such a fun environment and everybody had a great time. And, you know, we, we thought, wow, this is really like, we're really onto something here because um, we liked watching the women's sports and we would have it on, but it wasn't really the focus of our, you know, of our programming um, necessarily. And then, you know, when we saw just how, how much interest there was and how excited people were to be able to get together, you know, with other people to watch, uh, other fans to watch these games, um, you know, we then we made it more of a focus. And, and so then we had to really revamp um, all of our systems because, uh, you know, we had DirecTV, which we still have for, you know, we have a Sunday ticket for NFL. Um, we have uh, just, you know, all the local programming. But then women's sports are kind of a whole different level when you look at streaming and, you know, all the different um, ways, the markets and the way that the media is distributed. So it was, it, it became something that we had to adjust our whole setup um, to accommodate. Um, so, so that was, you know, we started with the, the Sky Games, and then we had th that next spring we had the NCAA, uh, the basketball, women's basketball uh, game, the final, you know, with Iowa and, and LSU. And we had our back room open at that point, and we had uh, 200 people for that. And then when the Women's World Cup came around, um, and then we had, we were, had a line, you know, we were at capacity. So um, 
it's just kind of grown over time. And I'm sure it's certainly busy, but uh, what's this weekend looking like for you? Oh, it's uh, so we actually are also opening. Uh, we, we added a second bar to our back room. And so this was our grand opening for, for that bar as well. So we have um, we've got live music Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then on top of it, we're going to be um, showing the, you know, March Madness. We've got uh, the hockey. We've got um, the Red Stars, which is our, our Chicago um, soccer team, has their home opener. So they have a bus leaving from our venue um, on Saturday morning. Um, so it's it's a lot. And I had to create a whole um, table, a chart for my team of all the different channels and um, and, you know, broadcast so that we can have we have we have over a dozen TVs. And so it, it's been uh, just a, you know, a, a kind of a, an exercise in and of itself to get all the programming scheduled and planned out um, so that we can offer all the different types of media. And I guess kind of broadly, what do you think the future will be for women's sports here? I think that, you know, I, well, what I hope for is so with men's sports, especially the the established ones like, you know, NFL and, and um, basketball, you know, b baseball, like they have established networks and times. And so I think it's a lot easier to build habits around watching games and, you know, like tailgating um, and, you know, every Saturday morning is when your college games are on and every Sunday is your, your NFL. <laughs> and <clears throat> excuse me, um, I think. I hope that women's sports get to that where, because I think that will really amp up the audiences. I think it's it's definitely seeing an inc increase right now, but you know the games are still kind of all over the place in terms of when they're on, what channels, you know, how you can get them, um, where you, you know we're not open during some of the times that the the games are on, or it's not practical for us to be. So, you know, I think having a little more stability around when the games come on and and like consistency will help venues and fans to plan around because you know you hear the joke of like you don't schedule your wedding you know on a Saturday in October right if you're a, a Badger fan or <laughs> so uh, I, I think we get to that point maybe eventually with women's sports too where people plan around it and. Um, it lets it be, you know, I think that will really take it up a notch in terms of viewership. When we come back from her often overlooked basement office, Secretary of State Sarah Godlewski says she's working to instill confidence in state government. We'll sit down with her right after this.